I want to say greetings to all of you from wherever you are in the part of the world, whether you're in the northern or southern hemisphere or western, wherever you are, I greet you in the name of Sunini Nanini. And uh, today's video is going to be in Leviticus chapter 15 and uh, Leviticus chapter 18, the commandments that we must keep and follow. So again, I'll let you know guys, regardless who you're listening to, what you're listening to, whoever, whether you like the message or teachings or not, I always tell you guys to go do your research, seek our Father in Heaven for yourself. Ask Him to reveal the secret of the Torah to you, give you wisdom and understanding. So you may understand it yourself, it's not just following someone or listening to what the person has to tell you, then you're going to do it. You have to do what your Father in Heaven tells you to do. And uh, if you're not understanding what you're reading, you have to ask Him for wisdom and understanding. He'll give it to you, just like He gave it to me. And those verses that I'm sharing with you so that you can <clears throat> go over them, uh, read them, try to get an understanding of them. And, sh you know, teach it to your children, your children's children, you know, and with your family. Try to keep them to the best of your ability. And ask them for wisdom and understanding is a must, a must, a must. You know, you cannot serve them in ignorance. You cannot use ignorance as an excuse. There's so many information, so much information out there for you. And not only that, our Father in Heaven told you that He will give you wisdom. If you ask of Him, He'll give it to you. He has no respect of no man. He will pour it into you. So all you have to do is ask. Don't say, no, no, I didn't know. It's not an excuse. Ignorance is not an excuse. And make sure there you don't compromise. You know, you don't negotiate when it comes to the commandments, laws, and statutes. You either give him all or nothing. Okay? There is no negotiation when it comes to the commandments of Sunini Nanini. So I'm going to start in my prayers that may Sunini Nanini or our Father in Heaven give you wisdom and understanding. May you open the, the heart of your eyes that you may be able to see and understand what has been said. Or you can go to the words yourself and understand what you're seeing and reading. So let's begin. Um, <clears throat> Leviticus chapter 15, it reads, And uh, <clears throat> our Father in heaven spake unto Moshe, <clears throat> Moses and Aaron, and saying, Speak unto the children of J Jacob. Remember, guys, I'm not using the word Yasharel, O Lord, you know. Maybe I'm probably going to use God, or Sonini Nanini. And like I said, I'm still looking. But God is a supreme being, so we know our Father in Heaven is a supreme being. I may use a Father in Heaven or, you know, Sunini Nanini, but I'm going to try to make it, you know, simple until I get more revelations uh, about that because there's so much confusion out there. And, you know, <clears throat> our enemies are putting there so much things out there. If you're not careful, you will elevate, exalt the name of Satan without you knowing it. So we have to be very careful, watch and pray and be prudent in everything that we said. We have to be very careful. <clears throat> so I'm going to start again. And uh, Leviticus chapter 15, and it reads, verse 2, Speak unto the children of Jacob or Jacob, and say unto them, When any man have a running issue out of his flesh because of his issue he is unclean and he shall be in it shall be his uncleanness and in his issue whether his flesh runs with his issue or the flesh be stopped from his issue it is his uncleanness every bed whereon to he lie that hath the issue or uncleanness and everything whereon to he sitteth shall be unclean and whosoever touches the bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And he that sitteth in anything whereupon he sat <coughs> that have his issues shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Uh, just to touch upon that, I remember guys, when we go out there, uh, a lot of people, majority, 
the world people where we are in the community society they're not keeping the commandments so therefore when you go out you have to understand everything just put everything as unclean to you they are unclean because you sit on the chair with somebody else who's sitting you don't know what was wrong with that person what kind of issue or running issue they had so when you get home wherever you go always make sure that you take your clothes as soon as you get home take it off don't sit on your bed or your chairs you know, because you just walked into the from uncleanness into your home, so you have to be very careful with that. Wash it up, put your clothes away in the hamper, or take a shower if you can. The first thing you walked in your house before you sit on anything, otherwise everything is going to be unclean. You know, so kind of keep that in mind when you go out. You touch people. You don't know what you know. Like I said, people are not keeping the commandments. Since you're aware of these things, so you gotta be mindful when you come out there to your home or in your car you do have to make sure everything is clean or you walk in to clothes that's on you or things that you've touched make sure you wash your hands and your clothes take it away so it be washed do not wear your clothes twice you know it's not you know advice for you to do because it's telling you if you touch somebody that's unclean you have to wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water so if you come from outside work what have you you don't know you sit on chairs where so many people sit and you touch things where so many people are touching so it is wise once you get home remove that clothes from your body and put it in the hamper to be washed and if you can take a shower as soon as possible that would be good you know trying to keep that as a habit that would be very helpful you know for yourself just an advice you know you can think about it and kind of do it um, if you want because you know you're not forced to do anything uh, but uh, in verse 7 I think that's where I stopped uh, and he that touches the flesh of him that have the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and he'll be unclean until the evening uh, I think that I read this it says, and he that sitteth in anything whereupon he sat and have the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening you know if you sit on the seat where somebody was unclean you know like i said you're going up on the bus you took a taxi you um uber or you go to work or you go to an office where you have to get a service you sit you know sometimes you move from seats to seats you know it's a thing you have to be considered a little bit you know when you get home try not to lay on your chair or your bed with those things and verse 8 it says and if he that hath the issue spit upon him that is clean when he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening meaning you know once the sun go down you know then you will be clean again and what settled whosoever sitteth upon as an issue shall be unclean so we don't mainly use horses or donkeys anymore but that will be the cars that you use will be your kind of modern day donkeys you know when you go in the car like I say you go in a taxi somebody give you a ride or you um, you know uber <clears throat> even if it's in your own cars you give other people rides you don't know what's wrong with that person you know you may look fine to you but you don't know the uncleanness that's coming out of their body so the person sits in your car you know it's so good to wash your cars too as well um <clears throat> wipe the seats as well and you know the clothes because sometimes you switch seats somebody drive you touch the wheel whatever you touch you know it's unclean so gotta keep in mind of that and verse 10 it says and whatsoever touches anything that was under him shall be unclean until the evening and he that beareth any of these things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening and whoever he touches that hath the issue and hath not rinsed his hands in water he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening and the vessels of the earth and the touches and that it has the issue shall be broken in uh, any vessels of wood shall be rinsed in water and when he that hath the issue is unclean and in his issue then he shall number to himself seven days and be yeah, for his cleansing. It's just like the um, women who have the periods, you know, you will be unclean for seven days. You know, once you have the period three, four days, however it lasts on you, and you have to do seven days for your cleansing. On the eighth day, you do a sacrifices of praise. And men also have issues, they have running issues. And even if you are 
saying i'm going to read it further down if your seeds come out of you you know that's uncleanness as well it considers an uncleanness and it says and wash his clothes and bathe in flesh and water and he shall be unclean this is all the uncleanness is just calling out that you should be aware of 14 and on the eighth day he shall take to him two turtle doves and like, you know we don't do no more sacrifices uh, we don't have any priests to take the sacrifices to because there's only one ordained to take sacrifices so therefore on the eighth day you'll give us sacrifices of praise and ask for forgiveness for your cleanness what have you okay and so after your cleanness issue stops so you do seven days for your cleansing and on eighth days you do sacrifices of praise and ask for forgiveness for your cleanness that's how it's supposed to go you're not gonna kill no pigeon no or Lord, because the Messiah died for that for you and uh, we're not doing it more sacrifices okay except sacrifices of praise verse 15 he's still talking about the priest going to do the offering for you which you do not partake in you're not going to be doing that verse 16 and if any man sees couple copulations go out from him so that's you know the man if that come out of you then he shall wash all his flesh and water which we will take a shower and be unclean until the evening when that happens to you when you come out of you you know you go take a shower and wash yourself in water you'll be unclean until the evening verse 17 and um every garment and uh, every skins were unto is the seeds of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening so wash your clothes what have you whatever it falls into or if you really wife you know have you you know it comes out following you. both of you have to bathe regardless after any sexual encounter with your wife or husband uh, both of you have to wash yourself in water and verse 18 the woman also with whom men shall lie with the seed of copulation I, I just mentioned that they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening and if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood and she shall be put up set apart seven days and whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening everything that she life upon or her separation shall be unclean and uh, shall be unclean everything also she sitteth upon shall be unclean um <clears throat> and i don't want to go into well any further than that you have to understand and nowadays you know women have pads you know you wear which kind of stop the blood from flowing on you i'm not saying you know i don't know what they use way way back but i'm pretty sure uh sometimes uh blood seep through from some of the verses that you read and you can tell that you know the women when they had the period they probably the blood blown out and you know dirty day clothes that's why they had keep them set apart in the house so women nowadays they have what you you call uh, the pads many different type of things that they, they they have so they can wear for the period and uh which you know you don't normally find anybody with blood on their clothes what have you but still you, you still will separate yourself you know you're unclean this you live in the house you're unclean and of course if you're single mom you know your children are going to be touching you so everybody's going to be unclean until the evening and you know no way of setting yourself apart because you don't have any what you call that a maid that will keep your child and, and watch you know it's going to be a little bit difficult for those of us who are you know especially living in america um because you have to have someone back in the days our ancestors they have three four five six maids taking care of them and bringing them food what have you but we don't have that and i'm not saying it's an excuse but though you have to understand the situation that wants in like i said especially for a single parent uh who they only want to have to take care of the children they cannot just leave the child and separate themselves for seven days and not feeding their child you know children uh so you know i know the most high understand that so you as long that you know you're unclean and you have to kind of do your best to keep yourself separated and wash yourself and everybody will wash themselves you know and stop wearing clothes twice a day uh, for a day or you know make sure the clothes come out you wash it everything you wash that it's gonna be a little bit you know like i said difficult but you do your best to the best of your ability to keep that commandments you know and pray to the most high but still you do still do the seven day cleansing and on the eighth they just give us sacrifices of praise whether any men or women 
or who coming from the uncleanness. Um, verse 21, it says, And whosoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. This is just the procedures you just got to do. So you just got to make sure you take a shower and take the clothes off of you. Okay? And whosoever touches anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean in the evening. So you always take a shower at the evening, take the clothes off of you, put it for washing, throw it in the washer, what have you. And uh, if it be on on her bed and on anything where on she sitteth, uh, like you see, I just say, if it be on her bed or anything that she sitteth, you know, they didn't have what I was explaining, like pads, uh, whatever things they were wearing, they probably leaked through and dirty the bed or dirty the, 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 the whatever they sat upon dirty. So these things have to be washed and take away. But, you know, since it's a little bit more sanitary now, you know, with the pads, what have you, you know, things don't leak through as much anymore. So, you know, which is better. But, you know, you still have to wash your clothes touching person who are going to sit through, even if it leaks on it or not, you know, you still be considered unclean. And this is a commandment. He said, when he touches it, or he shall be unclean until the evening, so the bed has to be washed, the clothes, whatever is dirty, has to be washed. And whoever touches that will be unclean, they have to bathe himself in water and wash his clothes, and they'll be unclean until the evening. In verse 24, if any man lie with her at all in her flower, which is a period, be upon him be upon him, he shall be unclean seven days. So if you sleep with your wife uh, who has a period, you're not supposed to do that anyways. You know, that don't sleep with your wife when she has a period. You do not do that. But if it happens, you will be unclean for seven days. On the eighth days, you have to uh, do a sacrifices of praise and acts of forgiveness for the uncleanness. And all the bed will upon he lieth shall be unclean. So both you and her will be unclean for seven days. And if a woman have her issues of her, is her blood many days out of the, the time of a separation, if it runs beyond that time of her separation, all the days of the issue, uh, she will be, if it will be her uncleanness, it shall be the days of separation. And she shall be unclean. Every bed whereupon she sat is the same procedure when you have your period. If it goes beyond the time it's supposed to be going, so it's still the issues running and shall be unclean. Anything the bed, you know, be separated. Anything that you touch, you know, will be unclean. Whether she sits upon will be unclean. And then uncleanness for separation. Verse 27. And whosoever touches those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water for the uncleanness until the evening. But if she be cleansed of her issues, then she shall number for herself seven days. It's always seven days. And after that, she shall be clean. And on the eighth day, she shall take unto her two turtle doves and two young pigeon and bring them. You know, like I said, we're not doing all this anymore. We just do a sacrifices of praise and not bring him to the priest. So on that eighth day, you just do sacrifices of praise and ask for forgiveness for your uncleanness. And, and that's it. That's all you do. Verse 31, he shall be separate. <coughs> Thus he shall separate the children of Jacob or Jacob from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness. So that's why we have to follow so we don't die in our uncleanness. When they defile by the tabernacle, by my tabernacle that is among them. And it says that this is a law of him that have an issue, and of him whose seeds goes from him, and is defiled therewith. And of her that is sick of a flower, and of him that hath an issue, and of the man, of the woman, of him that lieth with her that has the uncleanness. So this is the Torah for that, for your uncleanness, the procedures you must follow. And uh, it, whether, you know, you go out, like I say, you always understand that everybody is unclean. So when you get home, the clothes on you have to be washed, you don't wear them twice, and you have to bathe yourself in water and wash yourself. Okay? And we're going to jump to chapter 18. And... <clears throat> And it reads, and uh, and God, our Father in heaven, spoke unto Moses and say, uh, Speak unto the children of Jacob, or Jacob, and say unto them, I am your Father in heaven, after the doings of the land of uh, Egypt, wherein he dwelt, shall he not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, which I bring you, shall he not do neither shall he walk in their ordinances. So you're not supposed to be following anything the other nations are doing. Okay? Uh, regardless, that's why I say you have to be set apart. 
you know, set yourself apart, you don't follow the calendar, you don't follow the feast, the, 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 the holidays, you don't follow anything that they do, you do not follow any of their ordinances except the ordinances of so Nini Nani, your father in heaven that he gave you, which is a Torah. You know, you need to follow that. Verse 4 says, He shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances and walk therein. I am your father in heaven. I am your God. He shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am your father. None of you shall approach to any of that is near of kin to him. Your sister, your, your, your brother, your aunt, your cousins, what have you. Okay, to uncover their nakedness, I am your father. When, I, when it means that uncover somebody's nakedness, I mean you're sleeping with that person, okay? And the nakedness of your father, or the nakedness of your mother, shall thou not uncover. She is thy mother. And uh, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Verse 8, it says, The nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Um, if you remember in uh, Genesis chapter 35, and uh, the reason for that as well, when uh, our father in heaven was very strict about that, remember Reuben, one of the sons of Jacob, Jacobi, uh, he slept with one of his mistress or wife that he had and after that God put the commandments no one must should sleep with their father's wife or vice versa or the woman should be with their mother's husbands okay you cannot do that it's an abomination Okay, verse 9, the nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter and of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, meaning sleeping with them, for theirs is thy own nakedness the nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter begotten of thy father she is thy sister thou shalt not uncover her nakedness thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister she is the father's near kinswoman thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister for she is thy mother's near kinswoman Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thy aunt. Uh, thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter's daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover the, her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shall thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswoman, and it is wickedness. Neither shall thou take the wife to her sister to vex her to uncover her nakedness, besides the other in her lifetime. Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. That's people with the period. Remember, you should not sleep with somebody with a period. Okay? Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her adultery. Thou shalt not let any of thy seeds pass through the fire to Molech. Okay, that's uh, idol. Uh, you know, you cannot idols. You cannot give a sacrifice to idol, idols or your children to Molech. Neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am your father. Um, so, nini na nini. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Those are men sleeping with men. Okay. Uh, you do not sleep with a man like you sleep with a woman. It's an abomination. You can't do that, guys. Or women with women. You can't do either of that. There's abominations and confusion. Neither shall thy lie with thy be with, with any beast to defy thyself wherewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there through men or woman. You should not be sleeping with any animals, period. It is confusion and an abomination. Defile not ye yourselves in 
any of these things for in all these the nations are defiled which i cast out before you that something's happening worldwide right now everywhere you go because they reject the commandments of sunni nanini of our father in heaven they don't keep that commandments therefore you have to separate yourself you don't do what they do you know don't try to be politically correct or you know stay away from these abominations nations stay away from these things okay they're abominable do not back them up do not collaborate do not compromise no negotiate when it comes to the commandments it's a no-no and then the land is defiled therefore i do visit the iniquity thereupon it and the land itself vomited out her inhabitations remember this is the reason why god had um the children of Yacobi to destroy the Canaan because they were doing all these abominations, sleeping with the animals, uh, you know, homosexuality, uh, people sleeping with the near kins, you know, all the things that I repeat here, they were doing that. And the earth vomited them out. That's why he gave them the, the land. And he says also to them, if you do the same thing, the, the, the earth will vomit you out. I will punish you for your sins. And guess what our people do? Our ancestors, they did the same thing. So you have to be watchful, watch and pray, watch these things and not partake separate yourself if you have children if you can homeschool them take them away from the schools they don't partake in these abominations because they're teaching these children these things nowadays and you don't want your children to partake in this separate yourself be set apart he shall verse 26 he shall thereof keep my statutes and my judgment and shall not commit any of these abominations neither any of your own nations nor any stranger that's surging among you but you know now we want uh surging among the strangers so you know some of the strangers which are the other nations if they say okay i love your uh, father in heaven i love some i will serve him keep the commandments yeah that's fine they will be served but they have to keep the commandments that you're keeping these laws that i'm reading it's for both the other nations and the children of the Akobi, you have to keep the same law, follow the law. Do not, it's not done away with, you have to keep it. Okay, and uh, verse 27 For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. Okay, it's in verse 28 it says that the land spewed not you out also. When he defiled it, has it spewed of the nations that were before you verse 29 for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations even the stones that commit them shall be cut off from among their people cut off he kills you okay verse 30 therefore shall he keep mine ordinance that he commits not any of one of these abomination custom abominable customs do not follow the customs which were committed before you and that he defiled not yourself therein i am your father so nini nini uh, remember as uh, they're pushing down the uh, all this agenda and they want you to partake in it they want you to to accept it there are no negotiation, no compromising. You either give it all or nothing. When it comes to the commandments of Sunni and you don't negotiate. You either keep it or you don't keep it. That's all. You keep the commandment or you don't keep it. You're either wicked or you righteous. It's two things. You cannot be both. You cannot be wicked and righteous. And this is not you either or. So if you love your father in heaven, you say, I'm going to keep the commandment. You either keep it or don't keep it. You don't compromise. You separate yourself. Be a set apart okay from all these abominable things because you know as you know that the world has rejected the commandments of sunni and they the rejected of communion our father in heaven they don't take it so you don't be like them you don't follow what they do so may sunni and may the father in heaven uh, who created the heaven and earth may he guard you and keep you may his face shine upon you may he give you wisdom and understanding to see the secret of the torah so with that i'll say be blessed and i'll come with the next commandment if you have any questions feel free to ask and uh may he bless you oh by the way today's new moon on uh, the 2nd of january is new moon the uh, new month we're in the fifth month actually right now say so if you live in the southern hemisphere that we're in the fifth month and uh the northern hemisphere i think in march mid-march or first of april uh gonna be spring so that's gonna be your new year so i don't want to say much about that i just want to wish you a very a happy new moon uh 
Happy rest of your day. And may some bless you. Bye-bye.